time once again for a five minute ish review. The long awaited fourth film in the Full Moon Features subspecies franchise, Bloodstorm. Just as the other films did, this one picks up almost immediately after the events of the prior film. After a brief recap, we see Radu surviving his fate from the end of the previous film and him managing to sequester himself away in the bowels of his castle. Meanwhile, Michelle's sister Rebecca and U.S. Embassy agent Mel, after escaping Radu with Michelle secured in a body bag to protect her from the daylight, have crashed on a mountain road. Becky and Mel are killed, leaving a still-bagged Michelle left to be found by a passing motorist who inspects the bag and discovers Michelle alive, but with a severe aversion to the sunlight. Fortunately for Michelle, this motorist, Anna, is a doctor from a nearby clinic that is headed by Dr. Ian Nicolescu. After Michelle arrives at the clinic, Nicolescu quickly determines that Michelle is a vampire, and he tells her that he will attempt to cure her. As it turns out, Nicolescu is a vampire himself. Although he still requires blood to survive, he has found a way to use medical science to make him nearly immune to the effects of the daylight. Radu, now fully recovered, sets out to find his fledgling and flies off into the night, eventually arriving in Bucharest. There he seeks out a former fledgling, the vampire Ash, to provide him sanctuary. Ash has managed the finances of the Vladislav's fortune and amassed a large amount of wealth. Radu wants to take back control of the lair and evicts Ash and his vampires. One of Ash's own fledglings, Serena, begins to try and play Ash and Radu against each other, conspiring with each to find a way to destroy the other. Radu finds the clinic, but because it is a former monastery, he cannot enter unless invited. Ian offers to let him in if he will let him take blood from the bloodstone. Radu accepts and enters, but it turns out to be a trap. Guards subdue Radu with sun lamps, and Ian stakes Radu to the ground. Inside, Michelle, now almost entirely under Radu's thrall, escapes and releases her master. The two flee to safety as the vampire Serena arrives at the gate. She offers the key to the Vladislav's vault, where Radu sleeps. She asks Anna to enter during the day and destroy Radu. Anna and Ian, each with their own private motivations, head off to infiltrate the sanctuary of Radu and finally put it into his terror and save Michelle. This fourth film comes four years after the release of part three. Anna's Hove and Denise Duff reprise their roles and Ted Nicolau once again sits in the writing and director's chair. Melanie Shatner and Kevin Blair were, un were unable to return, hence their character's unfortunate and nearly off-screen demise. The second and third film were filmed back to back, so having a four year gap, you could easily expect some unease or inconsistency with the characters. So it's really exciting to see everyone slip right back into their roles as if, as if no time has passed. The events in this film, I think, act as a little bit of a prequel to the events we saw in Vampire Journals as far as Ash and Serena. The timeline is a little messy, but we are talking vampires. What, what's time to them, right? Jonathan Morris reprises his Ash, and he seems much more subdued and less manipulative than what we saw in Vampire Journals. Another bit of evidence to suggest that this takes place sometime before those events. I'm not sure why the backwards jump, other than the idea of a much more established Ash would have been too much of an opponent for Radu, and since this is Radu's film, you can't have him overshadowed by a secondary villain. The only real problem with the time difference is Ian is played by an actor that appeared as a different vampire in Vampire Journals. My first thought was he was the same character, just with an assumed name or something. But his fate in this film ruins that theory. Perhaps Ash, having lost a disciple, decided a replacement was in order and sought out one who reminded him of the last. This is the last chapter to the story of Radu and Michelle. But I'll be honest, I don't think we really get any more closure than we had at the end of the third film. I want to go into details, but if you watch the series yourself, I think you'll agree. If you've enjoyed the series at this point, you will leave the film a little melancholy knowing it is the last we will see of Radu and Michelle. Or is it? Follow the link in the show notes. Or drop an email to timeshifterspodcast at gmail.com to let me know what you think of Bloodstorm, Subspecies 4, or the franchise as a whole. 
Thanks for listening.